Action, Chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Darrell Issa, Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz is with us. Um, is that how you see it, Congressman Issa? No. Uh, obviously, the president knew he didn't have the votes on the Hill. He thought he might have had uh, support of the international body when he went to Sweden and on to uh, Russia. Uh, the time to make a deal with Putin, if he wanted to make a deal, was when Putin thought he had the votes. Uh, the reality is he took an, all, an olive branch from a man who is very untrustworthy when he didn't have the votes or the support of the American people. And, and candidly, look, I've met with Bashar Assad. I was in, on the delegation that first met with him when he was a brand new president. He is somebody who respects an existential threat to his regime and nothing else. All right. What do you, Congressman Chaffetz, your thoughts? Well, the President of the United States didn't come to Congress out of principle. He was politically being defeated. He didn't come to Congress when he wanted to bomb Libya and wanted to get rid of that dictator. So to bring that up in the speech, I thought was maybe a stretch, to say the least. And it also demonstrates if the Russians came to the table just in the last 48 or 36 hours, I guess they weren't paying attention to President Obama when he drew that red line out there and said, if you cross this line, if you now, start moving those chemical that's weapons. That's your red line. That's, that's the world's red line. That's not his red line. Go to be uh, fair I, here. Roll the tape. We all know that that's not true, and nobody took it seriously. That's the problem, is we need a leader. We need a president. We need a commander-in-chief that is respected around the world. We don't have that today. All right, but besides the contradictory statements on red lines and regime change, which was, you know, flipping, flopping, and flailing, I, I, I think a thing that on the one hand is sad, on the other hand is kind of funny, Congressman Issa, is when Kerry actually made that statement, and he said, well, if they give us our weapons within a week, it, we'll, we'll go along with that, but they're not going to do it. Immediately, the White House ran out in public and said, oh, no, no, he was speaking rhetorically. It was a major goof. He clearly went off script. Then Kerry comes out the next day and says, I designed that from the very beginning because Vladimir Putin jumped on it. I mean, it's a keystone cops here. Well, very, very clearly, they didn't have a plan. They're grasping for the straws. Again, Jason Chaffetz said it pretty well. Uh, the time to have Putin on board was when he, he drew his red line in the sand, or certainly before he came to Congress, because he knew he didn't have the support of the American people. So he thought he'd go to Congress and get support, found out he didn't even have even half of his own people in his own party. And certainly with his record and candidly with uh, Secretary or, uh, Ambassador Rice and the other people they put in front of us, they put in front of us the very people who, when they say high confidence, give us no confidence. What, the, Congressman Chaffetz, how do you think the world is seeing this? How are they viewing all these contradictory remarks and, and especially through the prism of, of Vladimir Putin's involvement now? Well, the worry is that across the world there is not the respect for the United States. Uh, when the president puts a red line out there and then we don't act upon it immediately, uh, I just see weakness. Um, uh, and look, a lot of this goes back to the fact that President Obama and Secretary Clinton for two years did not deal with this problem effectively. They ran around the world trying to say that Al Qaeda was on the run. Look, the Syria problem and the fact that they have this mass of chemical weapons didn't sneak up on us in the last three weeks. This has been a problem for nearly two years, and they didn't deal with it. They were trying to convince everybody that everything's fine. The world's just at peace. It's not. It's a violent world, and there are people out there that hate Americans and want to kill Americans. Yeah. We have to deal with that. And, and he also, the president, remember when he said he was uniquely qualified? That was his sell to the American people to unite the Muslim world because he, he lived in a Muslim country at one point. Um, and went to school there as a, a young young man, um, and then he was going to hit the Russian reset button. Now we got Vladimir Putin moving ships into Syria, Congressman, uh, uh, and then we have him threatening to shoot down uh, American missiles, and now he's threatening to arm Iran. Daryl Issa, what do we make of that threat? Well, certainly. This is a paper tiger. This is a president who can order an, an un, unlimited amount of drone strikes against uh, targets in countries all over the world, but he, including ones that he's had no authorization from Congress to go into. But then when it comes to actually providing a no-fly zone, humanitarian relief, pushing back uh, on the exodus and displacement of six and a half million 
Syrians. One out of 10 Syrians right now are displaced and refugee status either in Syria or in neighboring countries. He's had two years to deal with that real problem. He had 100 plus thousand people murdered with conventional weapons. And then he came to us and said, I want to have this sort of slap on the hand over 1,400 more. For what purpose? So that, in fact, he'd go back and kill another 100,000 with conventional weapons? He yeah. had, didn't have a plan, and now he has reached out to Putin for a plan. And if that plan succeeds, then do they have a green light to continue killing another 100,000 people in Syria with conventional weapons? What is the real goal? If the president says he wants regime change, then he ought to be willing to talk about regime change instead of if you well, will, purifying the regime. What I fear most, though, Congressman Issa, is that the regime change will be a radical Islamist government, probably, you know, the strings being pulled out of uh, Tehran. Uh, what will happen in Congress, uh, Congressman Chaffetz? Well, we got to watch it hour by hour because it, it, every day, every 12 hours, wake up, the, the president's taking a different direction and saying something in contradiction to, to Secretary Kerry. But look, we need solutions, not just reactions. We need leadership, not just pandering. And we don't, we're not getting that from this president. That's why even on the no. Democratic side of the aisle, nobody believes him. All right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring you back, both of you. We're going to have more on the hearings, obviously, on Benghazi uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you both for Thanks, keeping Sean. on that. And still ahead tonight.